life is meant to be fun. If I'm not having fun, if I'm not being in joy, then I'm missing the point. I know that's possible. And if I'm not experiencing that, then it's not, oh, screw reality, reality sucks. It's no, how can I be better, right? Jim Rohn's quote, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. How do I get better at playing the game of life and bringing the fun, bringing the play, bringing the aliveness into it so that I don't have to sacrifice what I value and what's important to me and who I really am to get to the destination. Welcome to the Power Plant Body Podcast. My name is Taylor and this show is focused on self-development. I found in my own life, as well as the lives of my clients that I've worked with, that it's human nature to focus on goals in one area of life, or maybe two areas of your life if you're lucky, to the detriment of the other areas of your life. For this reason, there's a tool that I use with my clients called the Goal Wheel that is specifically designed to shed light on how you might be preventing yourself from living the fullest life possible. In a nutshell, the goal wheel is a circle drawn on a piece of paper that's been divided into eight quadrants. The eight quadrants are family and friends, romance, fun and recreation, health and fitness, finances, personal growth and spirituality, career, and physical environment. Basically, you give yourself a score between one and 10 for each of these areas of your life, and that allows you to see where you're excelling and putting your attention but it also shows you the areas of your life that you're currently neglecting. The areas of life that we neglect are often the areas that we need to work on the most. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, to share insights from teachers who are experts in one or more of these areas of the goal wheel. Each interview is meant to inspire you to take action in one of those areas so that you can live a more fulfilled and balanced life. To get your hands on a free copy of the Goal Wheel PDF so that you can use it to create meaningful goals and take steps to achieve them, head over to powerplantbody.com forward slash free dash tools. You'll find a bunch of other free tools and resources there as well. Christopher reached out to me a number of weeks ago asking if I'd be on his podcast, the Mastering the Man Within podcast. I found that he's a very insightful and interesting person with a lot of creative and deep perspective on the world. So I knew that I wanted to have him on my podcast to learn more. During our conversation, Christopher talks about how he found men's work and personal development, the impact, the challenges, and the gifts that it's brought into his life, and how it's now led him to build a business around serving and contribution. Christopher helps men live a more fulfilled life by helping them find purpose, passion, and live a life of prosperity. As Christopher says, he's actively engaged in designing and creating his reality and mentors others to do the same. In fact, Christopher even shares how he deliberately asked for and manifested his perfect partner, Petra, who flowed into his life shortly after and to whom he's now married. I really enjoyed my conversation with Christopher. He gives off an incredibly positive vibe and you know he's deeply passionate and caring for all the people in his life. And I know that you'll love what he has to share. So without any further delay, I bring you my conversation with Christopher Burns. Well, Christopher, I appreciate you being on my podcast. You, of course, I was on your podcast not so long ago, uh, Mastering the Man Within, which is a fantastic podcast. If nobody's checked it out yet, go check it out right after this. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you being on, on my show. And I just invite you to take the next few minutes to let myself and the audience know who Christopher Burns is, what you're up to, and we'll go from there. Mm, mm, what a what a beautiful question. Who Christopher Burns is. And I am I am the light, bro. That's that's the first thing that comes to my mind is like I'm here to be this awakening source, right? Yeah. Source God, universe creator, channeling through me to uh, be that activation, to be the energy, to be the aliveness and uh, that presence in people's lives. The reminder of what's possible w- with with our joy, with our love and to lift others up because I know how uh, how empowered I have been because other people have been there in, in important times to lift me mm. up, to encourage me, to uh, have me see my potential. And so I love to do that with coaching today, do it with podcasts. I interviewed 800 guests on my last podcast, got wow. to expand my network a lot and just really connect with a lot of beautiful 
wonderful souls. And now I'm at this phase where I, I went really wide and now I'm like, all right, let's go super deep. Let's get laser focused. And so for me, it's the, this men's community that I'm building, mastering men within men mastermind. And I, I just, I know I went years feeling like I didn't have that brotherhood and mm. didn't have, I, I, my dad was amazing. I had some, some male role models, but I didn't have the ones that I wanted as far as becoming successful and, yeah. and creating lots of wealth. And that had pros and cons, right? I, I'm really strong in relationships, maybe had more room to grow as far as business and finances. And, you know, things are going great today, but it wasn't always like this, man. So I'm, I'm just super grateful for the growth and the progress. And that's who I am today, Taylor. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Well, men's work is a big part of my life as well. And uh, that's pretty well how we connected, you know, and um, something that shows up often in, in men's work is the idea of the hero's journey, right? Mm. So you depart on your journey and then uh, you kind of sink down into the abyss and then you make your way back and you contribute what you've learned uh, back to your community, which is where you're at right now. You're in, in this um, place of contribution. So I'd love to, I'd love to learn more about that. The start of that journey, you know, mm. what, what brought, Christopher out into the world of self-development? Where were you when that started and what was the journey like? Dude, I love it. I love it. So my dad, like I said, he was a great father, um, but I didn't feel like I uh, resonated with his his parenting, I think as all many, many young men do. And so I became rebellious and mm. said, I don't want to listen to my parents. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I want to go do my own thing. I uh, said, screw you, mom, dad, screw you, God, like mm. church, you know, the, the traditional yeah. structures of society, like I don't need you. I'm better than you, like arrogance, ego, pride, all that stuff. When deep down, I'm a wounded little boy. Mm. Uh, but I went through some uh, school through college, getting my electrical engineering degree and got that. And about six months before I graduated, discovered entrepreneurship through network marketing. And it was a health and wellness product. And my best friend introduced it to me and we were so fired up. And I proceeded to invest the next year of my life just voraciously digesting and integrating personal development. I had really good study habits at honors and stuff like that. So I loved studying the material. Mm -hmm. And when it came to being a leader and being confident and being a, an effective communicator, bro, I was, I was just falling on my face. And so I had all this drive, <laughs> yeah. all this ambition, yeah. right? And like, yeah. I, I knew I, it, it was possible. I knew the success, the money, the fulfillment, the houses, cars, women, right? Like that was, that was what drove yeah. me in the beginning. Yeah. And I knew it was all possible. And uh, about a year after I had discovered this network marketing opportunity, uh, I was living two lives. I was going to raves and partying and, and still living in that own world, uh, old world, mm -hmm. while trying to, to develop my mindset and be the best version of myself. And it, that fork, probably there was, there was enough kind of strain on like, which one are you going to choose that life's all right? Like, all right, we're going to give you a, a test. We're going to give you a, a a turning point, so to speak, you know, uh, the call to adventure. And, yeah. um, and so I was at a rave and I got arrested for selling ecstasy to an undercover cop. Mm. And, uh, that could have been a felony could have been something that stayed on my record and, and, you know, like messed with my life forever, quote yeah. unquote. Um, but thankfully I, after spending two days in prison and, uh, you know, like just being, so surrendered, so giving up and saying, God, I am, I am totally messing this up, totally mm -hmm. throwing my life away. And, um, this is not who I am, who I truly am. So help me guide me out of this situation. And I promised to dedicate the rest of my life to being the best version of myself. And so, uh, like I said, I, I got out of uh, prison for two days and, and uh, that wake up call and nothing ever happened. Charges were dropped. Wow. Case was dismissed. Wow. And uh, it was it was that wake up, shake up the, the scared me to my soul um, mm. to, to have me change my life. And I, I really cleaned up my act, started going to uh, Toastmasters and just becoming the best version of myself after that. But I would say that was a, that was a really pivotal moment, man. Yeah, no doubt. It's interesting how life throws those events in just, just at the right time just to right. shake you up and, <laughs> and wake you up, as you said. Yep. Uh, so beyond that once you once you started once you were given the second chance and you moved into the world of personal development and sharing ultimately sharing what you've learned with your community with the people that you interact with what did how did that start to take shape for you what 
what was the path that began to reveal itself uh, as you as you set out on it? Yeah. For me, it was hiring my first life coach, and his name was Lee Adams, and he was a guy in Southern California who'd built a successful, uh, you know, eight-figure business, um, uh, electronics business in Southern California, and he was going to Toastmasters, the same Toastmasters that I was going to, and he, at the time, was dying of cancer, and oh, he was wow. attempting to, to fight that and, and win over that, and um, to be able to work with this man in his, you know, I, I, I had the anticipation, oh, he's going to make it through this. He's going to recover mm. all that stuff. Um, but he ended up passing about, oh, a, I don't know, about two years after I had met him. And for me, Taylor, the, the big thing was seeing this man and letting it hit home uh, in my heart that he gave his final moments serving and passing mm. on his wisdom, passing that torch, being a contribution to me and to his other clients. And I was just really moved by that and, and uh, allowed that to shape the direction that I, I desired to go. And I said, you know, I've been learning all this information and it, it seems that anyone, no matter where they're at and, and what they've gone through or anything like that, can be a contribution to others, right? Mm. And there's, there's different qualifications, certifications, all that stuff. But I, I really believe that it starts with the genuine intent and commitment to serve people and have them be better off than when they first met you and interacted with you. And so set off on my uh, personal coaching journey after a lot of different jobs, door to door sales for Verizon, inbound sales for a fitness boot camp, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but I, I started my coaching company about six years ago, I believe it was hired my, a business coach to really help me uh, narrow down the, the message, the, the packaging, the offer, all that good stuff and um, launched that and then started doing one one-on-one coaching and, and mm. just grew from there, man. From there, I was, I was like, okay, how do I get this message out to the world? And that's when we, me and my ex-business partner, of, we were together for about five years. Um, we created this 12-hour live stream in a way to promote ourselves and help other people promote their stuff and make a bigger impact uh, together collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was an amazing, amazing experience, man. No doubt. You know, just to, to dive into that 12 hour live stream for a moment, cause that was no small feat, uh, from yeah. what I know about it. You know, you said that you interviewed over 800 people. Is that right? That's correct. Over, and you would over do, three and a half years, we did 138 of these 12 hour live streams, typically eight, nine, 10, uh, hour long interviews wow. on a Wednesday back to back with me as the host. Yeah. When you did that, I'm sure that you learned not only a lot about other people, but a lot about yourself and mm. where this journey was taking you. What was that experience like over those three years? What were some of the big takeaways from other people and from going through the process? Yeah, I, I really, I discovered that we're all so connected. It's like all, all these different experiences, while we might think that they're so diverse, it really mm -hmm. comes down to a handful of emotions and mm -hmm. uh, feelings and things that we do and, and typically coming from some kind of trauma in childhood, mm -hmm. you know, like that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty universal as far as human beings in our, in our stories. So I, I got clear on that people, even the people who have millions of followers earning tens of millions of dollars, like, yeah. wow, they're, they're epic and they've done mm -hmm. amazing things. They've achieved amazing things and they're not like special in the sense that they're different from me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like they, they don't have anything that's better than me. Their soul is not better than mine. You know, they were not gifted some silver spoon that says, all right, you are going to be successful. And yeah. you know, this guy over here, mm -hmm. John Doe is going to be unsuccessful. It's like, no, like mm -hmm. it's really what you make of it. it. It is your perspective. It's your paradigm. It's your frame of how you view the world. And the people who were the most successful had mastered their story and their ability mm. to tell it in an empowering, uh, uplifting, contributing way that makes a difference to other people. And uh, I, I loved hearing the variety of stories. I, I love all these different ideas. I'm a manifesting generator, love new ideas and, and creating yeah. that stuff in human design, if anyone knows that. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what really I got for myself, especially Taylor, was I have the audacity to do things that other people are unwilling to do. And that's mm. what sets me apart from 
the rest from the crowd. Uh, you might have heard the phrase that the bottom is crowded, but the top is wide open. Why? Because mm. there's so many people who are just comfortable in that mediocrity and the people who go the extra mile, who do the, the, what it takes, you know, who strive, yeah. who set goals, who are ambitious. Um, you know, I find that the resources, the universe conspires to help you achieve those goals. And, and I really discovered, you know, like, while I'm again, you know, I'm not special or or uh, my soul is not better than anyone else's. I choose to do extra. I choose to go the extra mile. I choose to be ambitious. I choose mm -hmm. to do more than is asked of me, and that's what gets me results. I show I show up early. I stay late, even if it's not my event. Right? Like I'll go there and I'll, I'll help set up and and welcome people and all that stuff because I know that's what a leader does. Mm -hmm. And so I really got to see that man. I am a leader and give myself that credit, which was which, which was big, man. <laughs> No doubt, man. Uh, I love what you said about how, you know, we, we all have these different outward appearances and we have these, the, 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 the particulars about our experience are different, but mm -hmm. the way that it manifests within us ourselves through emotions, both good and bad trauma or, um, achievements is very much the same. And like you say, people owning and mastering their story is such a great indicator of owning the next few chapters of their life. Mm. You know, are they, are they going to be writing it or are they going to be let it written, written for them? Mm. Um, which actually brings me to something uh, I'm interested in talking to you about, which is, uh, you mentioned, um, you know, lifestyle design, like creating, creating your future. Uh, you and your, your new wife yeah. have a, a magnificent affirmation that you shared with me when I was on your podcast. Can you w remind me what that was? Uh, which one was it? Was so, it like so, the better it gets, the better it mm, gets? Or no, it was, uh, like, so I remember you sharing, sharing with me that you're, you know, you, you see all of these beautiful things happening in your life, but yeah. realizing that there's still more to come. Uh, mm. and I can't remember exactly how the affirmation went, but it was something, it was something to the effect of taking, uh, like being great, grateful for the moment, being grateful for what's, uh, happening now and what next essentially. So is it, was it show me how it gets better than this? Show me, show how, me, it show gets me how, show us how it gets uh, even better, better. Right. That's it's exactly like, Oh it, yeah. dude, life's amazing right now. A lot of people have this expectation that, Oh, well mm. it's going to, it's going to come back down to normal. It's going to, you know, cycle back down. And this actually, yeah. a, a big part of this was from the big leap by Gay Hendricks. And okay. he talks a lot about having the expectation that there is no upper limit. Like life will mm. just keep getting better and better and better and better. Why is there this story that society has programmed into us that, well, you better savor it while it lasts because it's going to yeah. be gone. You know, it, it's like I get the wisdom in that this too shall pass. Uh, but, you know, yeah. I, I believe that we get to celebrate those moments. So show us show me how it gets even better than this in, in every celebration, in every feeling of joy, of euphoria. Dude, that's that's like telling the universe, turn on the afterburners, f pour, pour on the <laughs> gas. Like, let's go. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Well, for people listening who, you know, you have a, a take on creating your life that not mm. everybody shares or maybe not everybody knows about. Um, and I'd be interested to learn more about how you approach yeah. bringing, like squeezing the juice out of life, getting the most mm. out of the future chapters of your life that you can. Yeah. So I believe uh, everyone gets to leverage the experience that they've had and the the through line in their life that they can find. Uh, I guess I interviewed a great guy, Dove Barron, talks about, um, the, I think, the red thread or something like that. It's like this thread through everything that is in your life that's meaningful, that's important, that brings you joy, that brings you purpose and fulfillment. So everyone gets to discover what that is for themselves. And I think that's, that's really important is to be reflective and introspective about who you are. Mm -hmm. And for me, I loved video games growing up, man. I played so many video games and my style of, of gaming was I love to be the um, uh, real time strategy, command and conquer, uh, Starcraft, oh, yeah. you know, all yeah. that stuff like, <laughs> like organizing armies yeah. and cities and making mm -hmm. massive movements happen uh, and operations happen. And uh, I'm in, in my life path, I'm a four, so I really like processes and things like that and, and having things very structured and organized whenever possible. Um, but for me, I like video games. I like, love being the wizard too, like making things happen from far away. I don't yeah. necessarily need to be. <laughs> the yeah. warrior up in front yeah. taking hits. Like I'm, I'm more of like a calculated <laughs> yeah. strategic guy. Yeah. Um, so for me, 
I recognize that this is a uh, this is a journey, right? This is a marathon of life. And sure, in each moment, that's that's all we have. There is no future. There is no past. You know, as far as living in that stuff, it's all there yeah. is is now. And yeah. so, um, I I am patient in the strategy of like long term. As mm-hmm. far as man, I'm building a life for for you know generations. I'm building mm-hmm. legacy and impact and uh, my mission, dialing in my mission that will impact generations to come while also living in this present moment. So the video yeah. games helped me to see game uh, life like a game. Mm-hmm. And so I say, how do I play this game of life? How do I set up the rules and define my story in a way that I am the, the main character of my journey and, and love and that. And I also empower other men, especially to mm-hmm. see themselves as the main character, as the hero, as the architect and the author of their reality. Because that was one thing that landmark really blessed me with is mm-hmm. this, yeah. uh, blank slate tabula rasa it, mindset and paradigm that was was profound for me is knowing that i don't care what happened in the past i don't care what what things happened doesn't define who i am in this moment i create mm-hmm. who i am in every single moment and i believe that that 100% responsibility to to create my reality positive or otherwise right whatever happened to me whatever i'm experiencing i created it and and nobody else can can take the blame for that i i i take my power and own my power in that aspect. And I feel like that's something that's really important. And it allows me to be the the hero of my journey, Taylor. Mm, I love it. And to take that power, to find that power, you mentioned that you help other men do the same thing. Yeah. What does that process look like? You know, we're all our own heroes in our own story. The, the, you know, the story or the journey for each man is going to be, or for each person for that matter, is, is going to be different. How, how does one begin to find what that's going to look like for them. Yep. So for me, I, I started with this life document called the uh, purpose manifesto. And so what that is, is it's a document that shares then and, and, and it's written for me. I wrote it down all of the aspects and dimensions of my life that were important to me and how I wanted it to look, how I wanted to feel, what I wanted it to be like. So whether it was relationships, whether it was my business, whether it was spirituality, whether it was having all these different coaches in different areas of life because I wanted to be optimized and thriving, Mm -hmm. martial arts, music, voice, communication, relationship coach, spirituality, like all this stuff, right? I I wrote this out on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. First, what I did is I, I data dumped. I I said, okay, what are all the things that I want? What do I desire in my life? Mm -hmm. And through that process of data dumping, I organized, I refined, I grouped things together. I let go of things that weren't really that important to me and got it down to about two pages for me. Um, Mm -hmm. But it was like super small font and like, you know, like my my whole life, (laughs) I, I, I designed it. And so that would be the very first thing. And in the Mastered Man curriculum that we have that our guys go through, um, we start with purpose, right? So the three pillars are purpose, power, and prosperity. Mm -hmm. So we start with purpose. You got to, you get to know what you want, what you desire, what your values are, who you are, what do you stand for? What do you not stand for? What are the things you won't tolerate in this life? What kind of a legacy do you want to leave? What Mm -hmm. eulogy do you want said uh, at your funeral, right? All these things like, do you, do have you dimensionalized, defined and, and written out, codified, have it tangible, what you want your life to look like. If not, then that, that would be the very first place I start. And I, I love written word because it's really precise in certain mm-hmm. ways. Uh, but you could start with a, a, a vision board. I have a vision board right, right beside me, right? Depends on people's modalities mm-hmm. uh, and what they, what they enjoy. But maybe it's that written document. Maybe you want more of a vision board that inspires you and calls you into a better version of yourself, what your dream life looks like. But that would be number one, man, is, is just getting clear on what pulls you. What's, what's the soul pull that keeps you going forward. Not that you have to push yourself because I think a lot of guys want to motivate themselves and, you know, push themselves to get to success, success. And it's like, what pulls you, you know, what's, what's easy. What's just like, has you float along totally in flow, totally joyful and alive and lit up. And that's, that's what I seek. That's what I create. That's what I Mm -hmm. generate every day, man. I love, I love that you brought up what pulls you, like your soul pulls you. Uh, what, what does your soul pull? Mm -hmm. Because I think now more than ever, just with YouTube, with Instagram, with Facebook, we see the lies that are being lived by so many other people. And this idea of finding your purpose and living your purpose, it's easy to look, uh, or it's, it's like the default mode to look 
uh, people who are living their purpose and go, oh, well, that's what I need to do. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I need to basically do exactly what this person is doing and find my own way of doing it. But that is one of the quickest ways to coming up against a lot of resistance because you're trying to live somebody else's life, you know, and for what you're mentioning is, is finding what is easy for you, what puts you naturally into a state of flow so you can keep it up long term, which I, I love because I don't think that that's talked about uh, enough these days as much as it should be anyway. Dude. So spot on, man. And I, I know that when we are first getting started, it can be very awkward and uncomfortable and uh, ch- potentially challenging or there's resistance. Like, mm-hmm. how am I supposed to figure this out? It might feel like we have no idea what our what our purpose is, what what our mm-hmm. where we're where we're supposed to go in life. And, uh, you know, I've been doing about 10, 10 years of personal development, right? About a decade of personal development yeah. started when I was 21. And I think that's that's important to recognize that this stuff takes time. Like you're not oh, yeah. not supposed to have it all figured out. It, it, I'm here's an, here's another really great affirmation. Uh, a lot of people say things take a lot of time, right? And and it's like oh you know ten ten year whatever success uh, uh, successful instant instant success overnight success <laughs> ten years in the making, right? Exactly. And it's like okay cool that's that makes sense. That's a good yeah. frame to kind of be patient with. And I also like to say, yeah, I'm, I'm patient. I'll, I'll do this as long as it takes. And I'm always open to instant manifestation. Mm-hmm. I'm always open mm-hmm. to things working out right now and mm-hmm. me getting everything I desire and more right now. It's yeah. like, yes, be willing to do the long-term stuff and that that process, be willing to, to go through that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's, there's not really an escape to that, <laughs> yeah. at least at my level of consciousness. Um, you know, so... Uh, I, I'm open to that. I'm committed to that. And I'm also ready and open to receive the, the shortcut, the miracle, the instant breakthrough, uh, everything I ever desire now. And, and I think that's a, that's a powerful place to stand in both of those worlds at, at once, Taylor. A hundred percent. It's like the quantum leap or in, yeah. in video game uh, reference is the power up, you know, yep. just waiting for those power ups to show up. Yeah. And I, we've all, it doesn't matter uh, if someone believes in, you know, I think you and I are on the same wavelength. We, we, we know there's something more going on. Just maybe can't put, uh, put our thumb on exactly what it is. Probably not supposed to be able to put our thumb on exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. But even if you're a little bit skeptical, everybody's had moments in their life that it's like, oh, this is a little bit just, it's a little too coincidental. You know, mm-hmm. is this a little bit too much to, to just say, chalk it up to coincidence? Um, and I think that, you know, th- th- those are like the magic moments of life. You know, you go through life and you build things and you work on things you work on yourself. You wake up in the morning, you do, you go through your routine and you're, you're, you're looking to build something greater. And then all of a sudden one day a quantum leap or something happens where it's just, mm-hmm. it was unexpected. You didn't anticipate it and it shifts everything for you. Uh, in, you know, in, in hopefully in a good way. And, uh, and those are the, the magic moments that, like you say, uh, it's good to be open to. When you think about, well, let's talk, let's talk about your, cause you're, you, op, you operate a men's group, right? Like you, yep. um, so, yep. so tell me more about that. How did that start for you? What was the, uh, what incited that? And then how has it progressed and what does it look like today? Yeah. Great question. So, uh, like I said, I was in a five year business partnership and mm-hmm. I, I felt like there was this experience of my, my purpose and my soul is not quite on track. And yeah. so in April of 2020, uh, I said, you can have the company, you can have everything. I'm going to oh, leave wow. and go start my own stuff and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, start over. And mm-hmm. it's a big decision. In- yeah, dude. Oh, dude, it was it was super tough. There was a lot of grieving. There was a lot of, um, you know, behind the scenes stuff. It wasn't mm. as easy as I make it sound, but <laughs> you know, that's that's what yeah. ended up happening. And I'm grateful for every step of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started up this this new company, new new direction, right? And in October, and the very first thing I knew was, man, I just I want to work with men, and I want to have men feel like they're a part of something because I had this experience of even though I was connecting and networking with so many people, there was a, a missing bond and, and, and bonds, right? Real, mm-hmm. real strong bonds that I could lean into people 
bring my worst, bring my best, challenge people. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the masculine loves to be challenged, loves to Mm -hmm. be called forth into its greatness. Uh, and also a a place for even the feminine to show up in, in dialogue and healthy expression and and getting things off our chest and things like that. And I, I didn't have that over the, over the years. And, um, I was like, man, you know, nobody's doing this men's like circle and community entrepreneurship, like business relationships, all of it kind of mixed into to mm-hmm. one, at least the way that I thought I wanted to do it. And so in October, started up a Facebook group and just started hosting, uh, monthly men's dinners here in Las Vegas and yeah. started hosting weekly mastermind calls, virtual zoom mastermind calls are on Mondays at 6 PM. And just creating a venue for guys to be seen, to be heard, to be uh, validated, to not feel like they're alone on the journey, yeah. and ultimately to sharpen their their sword, right? Mm-hmm. Iron sharpens iron, and to be a better version of themselves because they're being transparent, they're being real, and they're opening up so that they can get feedback and get back into the ring and get back into action. So today we do, like I said, monthly dinners, workshops. We have one coming up July 31st. Um, we do the weekly mastermind calls, and then we also have our elite men mastermind group, and that's just for more committed individuals who want a deeper dive, who want to uh, network with experts. We bring experts in on on our Wednesday calls. We have two calls a week. There's like goal setting and and uh, oh, awesome. uh, deep dive masterminding and stuff, but. Yeah, man, I, I'd say that the the podcast is a big part of it. So just building things out. Like I, I feel mm. like I've already kind of done this once, uh, but yeah. this time doing it more in alignment and in a, mm. a niche and a direction that fulfills my soul. Yeah, I get you. The uh, There's a lot of parallels. We talked about this before. There's a lot of parallels in where you're at and where I'm at with uh, yep. you know wanting to go a level, a level deeper and to things that are more meaningful. The men that show up, to the the dinners and the masterminds there's something in guys that was always there they didn't know quite how to describe it they didn't know what it was Mm. uh, but it's like this calling to like you say uh, iron sharpens iron it's a calling to be around other men in a place where they can uh, talk about the things that are challenging them talk about the things that they're excited about achieving or, uh, you know, like their wins, but being around other men to construct something larger than themselves is something that I feel is intrinsic to every man. Uh, but is, is, is not known as such for so many until they find something like your men's group. Um, however they end up finding it, it's usually through word of mouth, right? Yep. What do you, what do you think? Do you feel like we're trending in the right direction with that? Do you feel like uh, that the je ne sais quoi, you know, the, the part uh, deep down inside of uh, the man that that, that uh, they can't label, but when they find a men's group is, is like, oh, this is what I was looking for my whole life. Do you feel like that is movement is moving in the right direction these days? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll share my experience. When I discovered uh, personal development workshops and seminars, like three-day workshops, retreats, things like this, I was like, holy crap, I am home. <laughs> like I found yeah. it. I found yeah. where I belong. Like these are my people, you know, yeah, yeah. for me, yeah. like I, I love personal development. I love growing mm-hmm. myself. And uh, so that was, that was like when I felt most lit up and alive is the, by these other people who are in the ring, who are committed to growth, who are up to big things in their life. I was inspired, you know, and, and also having that safe container. It's like, there was, there was so much, I was energized. There's lots of music, dancing, great people, memories. And so that was, that's like really when I lit up. And so I believe hundred percent that this deep yearning within us, within human beings, we'll we'll zoom out to human beings. Mm -hmm. There's a deep yearning within human beings that something about the way that the world has been going up until now Mm -hmm. with, uh, corporate, corporate corporations, um, consumerism Mm -hmm. with, let's say governments, you know, kind of having the power and us feeling in general powerless, right. With, with, um, the culture of shame, with the culture of, Mm -hmm. of like hiding of disconnection of not really being in love, right? In connection with love. We know, we know that that there is something not quite right here. We know when Mm -hmm. we're on Instagram and we spend five hours on Instagram scrolling or whatever, liking other people's stuff and comparing ourselves and we get off. I think you, you, 
got off of Instagram, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's the best decision in my life. So it's like when we do that and then five hours later and we feel like exhausted and depleted yeah. and like, oh my God, what did it like? I got to go take a shower, right? Because mm. I just feel, I don't feel good about myself or whatever, right? Everyone's yeah. having different experiences. But I know, I know that there's a soul guidance, there's a GPS, there's an internal guidance system uh, within us that tells us that I'm on track or off track. Mm. And uh, I believe that people are waking up to, I don't have to feel off track and keep doing that forever. Like that's, that's no longer the standard that I have to mm. grind my life away because that's just what people do. Um, I believe that the consciousness is spreading and there's enough momentum. We've reached like, let's say critical momentum where now it's getting faster and faster and faster that people are waking up and recognizing that they can like do more, be more, have more. They can be free. They can choose to create the, the life of their dreams instead of kind of settling. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's super super inspiring. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the power of word of mouth and how like when someone has a good experience to these days, like there's so many people who speak negatively and, and yeah. just vomit toxic thoughts and uh, disempowerment yeah. and things like that. And so I believe that our souls again, know, man, when there's, when I'm around people who are, who are empowering, who are encouraging, who lift me up, there is a different sense of myself. Like I, it's mm -hmm. almost like I'm a, in a different dimension. I'm in a different yeah. uh, life than I was before because I, I'm seen differently. I'm, I'm experiencing myself and what it means to be a human being differently. And I believe that people cannot forget that, Taylor. Once they've experienced that, once they've, they've felt that, then the soul is like, yes, this is home. This is what it's supposed to be like. You're supposed to be loved. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be connected. You're supposed to be empowered like, and feel empowered and be happy. And of course, there's lots of other experiences and emotions. This is a beautiful human journey. Um, yeah. But that's that's a big part of it. And so definitely when these guys come to these calls, come to events, different things like that, they feel that experience. They, they experience what it's like to, to be home, to remember what life is meant to be like. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So much in there. The, uh, you mentioned, um, you know, that the, the people are starting to wake up to this, the negative we're, we're moving, we have been moving in a direction like the, the you know, the corporatism of, of, uh, the world essentially. And, and, uh, I've, you know, I think you and I are, are, um, you know, there, I have no problems with the free market and, and no, I love, people I love making capitalism. money. Yeah. Yeah, love exactly. <laughs> love, love capitalism. But, uh, but the, you know, cause it's a place for people to go bring themselves and create and offer value to the world. But the negative side of that is, uh, I feel like it's a lot of men and women who never worked through their, who got to the top, never worked through their trauma mm -hmm. and are trying to fill these cavernous parts of themselves that can only be filled up by one going through whatever and working through whatever it is that caused that in the first place. But then the second thing is filling those things back up with, um, life affirming moments around people like you're, you're mentioning like uh, brothers and sisters who have their best intentions in mind, just the same way that they have their best intentions in mind. I really do think that if we could all get on board with this, uh, you know, there's, I think last time we spoke, I mentioned that just a couple hundred or about a hundred kilometers from here, they're cutting down one of the last remaining rainforests on, on the Island. And, uh, I can tell you, man, like, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, the people that I surround myself with, the people who strive to improve themselves on a daily basis would never make a decision to do such a thing. You know, mm -hmm. they would, mm. you know, they, even if they owned a logging company, they would still, uh, decide to preserve a yep. land like that one and say, Hey, you know what? What? That's sustainable. Not so, we're going to replant yeah, well, for every yeah. two trees for every one that we yeah. dig up or process. Exactly. So, so the work that you're doing, the work that you're, you're doing with other men, I feel is so vitally important right now because these are the people, if not them, then their children are going to yep. be at the head of companies who are going to make the decisions that make or break a society in the future. Dude, hundred, hundred percent, man. And, you know, I, I was just thinking as you were saying that, 
how this this show is uh, you know power plant body and you know like really being connected with our body as our temple as as this vessel mm-hmm. and for me my body like I, I wanted the external focus of like ego i want muscle that kind of stuff and there's nothing wrong with that um but if, if it's built on a foundation of like ego and pride mm. and arrogance and you know sh- yeah. uh, trying to cover up shame trying to cover up unworthiness or lack or limitation or whatever it might be mm. um then that is not the the right reason it's not the healthy reason it's totally. not the holistic reason it's not the conscious reason and just within the last probably you know three and a half years since i met petia i really made a 180 degree shift in my commitment to my health mm. and that being a, a one of the biggest priorities and so i would just remind people out there who are listening if if you are not experiencing the results that you want in your life in your health, you don't feel like your health is like really on point or it's really a priority in life. Uh, that's, you know, that survival kind of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm-hmm. the survival of food, water, shelter. Well, yeah. the, the thing that they don't say about food is like quality food, <laughs> like good food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when that, when that need is met with like good quality nutrition and food and you're feeling great, man, like everything else gets so much easier easier otherwise it's like you're fighting an uphill battle upstream Mm -hmm. battle trying to get to where you want to go and dude that was that was such a big transformation for me is like that holistic really living that holistic mindset the the Mm -hmm. like oh you can have anything you want you can create your reality it's like great am i am i practicing that with these basics of Mm -hmm. treating this this one vessel uh that i have with with the utmost care and respect honor devotion loyalty that was a big word that petia brought back into my life is loyalty it's like yes loyalty together 100 percent. what else am i loyal to am i loyal loyal to my body? Am I loyal Mm. to, you know, uh, thinking positive, empowering thoughts, uh, an empowering mindset? Am I loyal to my clients and my community? Of course, you know, so just really getting reconnected with that was, was huge for me, Taylor. Yeah. The, the, there's that, the the temple of the living God, I think is what it is, right? Like you are the temple of the living God. Mm. Uh, And, and, you know, you want to take care of that temple. You know, a lot of our temples look like, uh, what's that place in, um, in uh, Cambodia, Goblet, uh, Go, uh, Anchor, it's, it's Anchor like a, Rot. Angkor Wat, yeah, Angkor yeah, Wat, yeah, where right. the trees are growing over, is it crumbling and all that sort of stuff. Yep. <laughs> we need to build these things back up, like you say, and, and nourish uh, ourselves so we have this solid foundation on which to build the rest of our life. I've always said it's like, uh, you know, you think about all the investments you can make, mm-hmm. you, know, in, you know, investments in the stock market or investments yeah. in a property or investments and what, what have you. Usually the, the anticipation is that you'll be able to reap what you sow in the future to enjoy them right in your retirements mm-hmm. or in later years. But if you haven't invested in yourself and your body, when you get to that time when you will reap what you've sown with your investments, you won't even be able to join them in the first place because your, you know, your 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 body will be so neglected that uh, you know what good is money? What good is free time? And that's at that moment. Um, one of one of the things I wanted to touch on that this brought up for me is um, sacrificing who we are, like the 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 like doing something to get somewhere and giving up who we, who we truly are, giving up our values, giving up Mm. what's most important to us for the, you know, outcome. Right. And so what is it? The, the means justify the end or end just finds mean, whatever that is. And I believe that, especially with video games, I wanted to link back to that because I had so much fun playing video games, but it wasn't taking me anywhere. And that was really Mm. frustrating to me after I looked back uh, at the end of my kind of video gaming life and stepping into personal development. I was like, damn, I wasted so much time, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and on the same token though, uh, it was such a great kind of, let's say milestone or uh, anchor to come back to of this is supposed to be fun. Mm-hmm. Like life is meant to be fun. If I'm not having yeah. fun, if I'm not being in joy, then I'm missing the point because I had mm-hmm. a lot of fun playing video games. So I know it's mm-hmm. possible to have lots of fun and just dude, hours, days, yeah. just disappearing, right? Because I'm just so <laughs> in the flow and so in the moment, I know that's possible. And if I'm not experiencing that in reality, then it's not 
oh, screw reality. Reality sucks. It's no. How can I be better? Right. Jim Rohn's quote. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. How do I get oh, better I at playing the game of life and bringing the fun, mm. bringing the play, bringing the aliveness into it so that I don't have to sacrifice what I value and what's important to me and who I really am to get to the destination? How can I be the creator of my reality mm -hmm. that is able to manifest the reality and architect the reality that no, I, I'm living bliss every single day. I'm living joy. I'm living peace. I'm living, mm. you know, just uh, wonder and miracles and magic every single day. How do I create that? I don't. I don't want to settle for anything less than that. That I am the creator of my reality. I take a hundred percent personal responsibility for the reality that I create. So with that power, I'm creating the most amazing yeah. freaking theme park life ever. You know, <laughs> just on this ride of yeah. life, enjoying the f out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I, I love that you say, take like basically taking responsibility for your enjoyment of life. Yep. And, uh, and, and I've been increasingly as, as years have gone on, looked at life as being a video game, yeah. uh, you know, s s not in the, in the exact sense of a video game, but like, it's, it's basically, I look at it as a game. Like all of this is, we take things so seriously and, and mm. so, um, you know, like, it's like, oh, if this happens and you know, that's, that's the end. Like I, I lose, if I lose my job, I'm screwed. I'm never going to get another mm -hmm. job. If, uh, you know, if I, uh, you know, what, whatever, you know, my, if my car breaks down, I'm going to be screwed. It's like a blip on the radar of your life. And we, mm -hmm. we just pour all of our energy and attention into these could be or would be's. And, uh, but when, you know, I, the la like I said, the last few, I'd say the last five or so years have been increasingly looking at life as a game and, and almost looking at them as, uh, as those moments of, of being like, Oh, this is, this is great. It like, it's a new level, you know, like I get to learn and like create and, and focus on how can I turn these things around and, and, uh, enjoy myself in the process because none of this should be taken as seriously as I used to take it, which, mm. uh, you know, it doesn't add any life or any value to, to me by worrying about things. Um, but it certainly adds value to look at it as a, as an opportunity to grow and to, to, uh, take on a challenge and create something, uh, enjoyable out of it. Dude, you're so right. And, and what came to my mind as you were saying that is, uh, the, the, what if I text the wrong thing to, to the girl or to the client yeah. or whatever it might be? What if I yeah. say the wrong words and like, we're yeah. so stressed out and like putting so much pressure on ourselves, mm -hmm. like, come on, let it like, stop, yeah. stop taking yourself so seriously, just yeah, in, enjoy totally. it and trust and the right people. You know, that's, that's something that Petty has really taught me, my, my wife. And, um, she's taught me that the right people, you can't, can't say the wrong thing to the right people and the right people will like make you lit up, you know, yeah. like they, they will just bring so much joy and fulfillment to your life. And if someone doesn't sign up or they say no, or, or it doesn't work out or whatever it might be, those people weren't meant to be in your life or they were meant to totally. be in your life for the season that, that they were there for and bless mm -hmm. them for that. Um, but no, but no, in your, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul that you deserve to have amazing, wonderful, devoted, loyal, fun, epic people in your life. And anything mm -hmm. that says to the contrary, oh, there's no good men. You know, oh, you know, women are all, you know, whatever, you know, whatever derogatory terms, uh, you know, like <laughs> there's, there's all these kind of stereotypes and stories that people might have the tapes playing in their, mm -hmm. in their head. And so we, again, a hundred percent personal responsibility. What are you choosing? What are you, what are you focusing on? What are you creating? Yeah. Because like you can, create anything. So what do you choose to create? And just a quick side story. That's how I created my wife. That's how I created Petia is I wrote out a description of my yeah. dream woman. I was affirming about it all the time on the 12 hour live stream, speaking it into existence, focusing on it, uh, visualizing us in particular scenarios and, uh, you know, in, in Greece or in, you know, in everyday life, going to the gym together, just having a conversation, how she makes me feel. I was sending love to her when I just in intuitively got the feeling that maybe she's going through a hard time, right? So I'm just going to, I'm going to send her some love. I'm going to, I'm going to let her know she's not alone. And I had no idea who she's it, who she is or, you yeah. know, where she's at in the world uh, or when I would meet her, but I just trusted that process. And so like taking that hundred percent responsibility of men, how, how would I want to create this woman, mm. this dream woman and playing with it, playing with it. There's no right answer, right? It's like feel into it. What feels right for you? And that was, that was huge for me. That's a beautiful story, man. Uh, I've heard um, a couple other people do something similar to that. And I just think it's amazing because, 
you know, that's like you're, you're improving exponentially the lives of two people yeah. by bringing them together in a, in a mm. creative way. You mentioned earlier, um, the clean slate and that actually, uh, I was reminded just now of that. Um, and this idea of dying each day, actually, this is a, this is something that's I talked on our, yeah, on our last definitely. interview, the, the idea of resurrection, you know, and, um, something I, I remember this is about three or four years ago. I was just beating myself up every night. I was, I wasn't sleeping very, very much because when I would go to sleep, I'd think, Oh, I could get up and do this and this and this in my business, mm-hmm. or I need to do this, this, and this. Yep. And there was always more work to do and always more work to do. And I wouldn't okay. fall asleep. And the way that I started to trick myself into falling asleep was when I went to go to sleep, I would think of it as like a decathlon or, mm-hmm. you know, where they, where they run, one person runs 200 meters, they pass the, the baton yep. to the next person, they run 200 meters. And I think of myself from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep as like one runner in that race. Mm-hmm. And I did, I did as much as I could that day. Maybe I did less than the person before me, but I did as much as I could, you know? And then when I was going to sleep, I'd say essentially to myself, I am dying to myself tonight. I, I have no more responsibility. I've done what I've can. I've done what I've can today and I'm going to, uh, acknowledge myself for what I've done and allow myself to fall into sleep with peace. And then tomorrow I expect a new version of myself to wake up, be reborn and carry on for me. And that helped me fall asleep. But I think that this has parallels in a lot of the ways that you also look at life, which is like you, you, you talked just a moment ago about how you met Petya and that didn't just come from focusing on who she would be and what she would add into your life, but also by not looking at all of the past experiences that you might've had that might've otherwise crept up as internal dialogue, limiting beliefs that you were just talking about a moment ago. So this idea of, you can start fresh at any moment. You can resurrect yourself at any moment and decide to have new ideas, new beliefs, and new desires in life. Dude, dude, and that's that's such a key is that we we have that – give ourselves that permission, right? Because mm. so often men especially are uh, seeking permission, seeking validation, seeking mm. approval from outside, significance, right? We want to be significant. We want to be important, all that good stuff. Yeah. And so if we learn to, to give ourselves that, man, we can, we can be so free. I think that's yeah. something guys really want uh, more, more and more than ever is freedom, true freedom, time, mm. money, freedom, sure. But freedom to be ourselves, freedom to, yeah. to do what we want, when we want, how we want it, and um, the, allowing the life force to move through us and, and allowing ourselves to be a conduit and a channel for the divine, for God, for the universe, for our highest purpose and for – uh, other people or whoever, mm. whoever that is, right. It might be billions of people. It might be your family and just really mm. being a great father or a great leader in your family, whatever it might be. So there's, there's no right answer for that, but I, I really resonate with that. And also that that's very in alignment with our um, pillar of power. And so mm. I call it channeling power um, because you're able to actively channel that power. And um, when you're channeling power, you might think, oh, well, power can can be uh, bad, right? Like it can it can go the wrong way. It, it can corrupt. It can be used in negative ways, things like that. That was mm-hmm. that was a big thing for me, right? Carrying that stigma. And uh, with, with the power of rebirth, you're able to access the purest potential of your power, of your self, of your abilities, right? And so when we're channeling that power, we're really able to move mountains that we mm-hmm. wouldn't have been able to move before. But part of that is being able to, like you said, sprint through the day, do as much as we mm-hmm. could, you know, live as fully as we could, touch on the key areas of life. I think that's another big thing is don't wait till tomorrow or next week or five years from now to circle back around and touch on the area that you've been neglecting, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll, I'll do it when, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like, no, every day is a, is a microcosm uh, mm-hmm. of what your life is going to be like in the mm-hmm. long run. So if you say, well, I'll talk to my parents when, it's like, man, you're, you're putting that off. Like, why don't you talk to them today? Send them a, just a mm-hmm. quick text message. Sometimes, yeah. again, we put so much pressure on ourselves to do the whole thing. We compare ourselves with the, the person who goes on a sabbatical and, and travels in India for months and months at a time. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like if you can meditate for three minutes and that's where you're at, yeah. pff, 
Power to you, bro. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) definitely. (laughs) Definitely. I love that idea of your, your day as a microcosm of what your life will be. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a fantastic analogy. You mentioned power. So there's three pillars. There's purpose, power, and, um, and, uh, prosperity, prosperity. I hope that wasn't a Freudian thing that, (laughs) because I forgot prosperity. (laughs) Um, but, uh, I would love to, I would love to learn more about what those mean for you. So, so why don't we start with uh, purpose? What does purpose mean for you? I love it. Flipping the script, man. Uh Um, so good. So purpose, I, I, to simplify it, it means what, what is the next step in this moment? Because I think sometimes we can get so, so big on what purpose means in a scope and impacting billions of people. And that's great. And uh, I like to come back to this immediate moment, the now, the now is all there is. It's all, all we have is all we ever will have in, in my experience, you know, my perspective. So purpose is what's, what's the next step? What's calling me? What's pulling me? What's that soul, soul pull. And maybe to have a fulfilling life and to have uh, these most beautiful epic moments of now, clarity on the type of life that I want to live uh, is essential, right? Mm. It might be essential to get that purpose manifesto and get that written document, put it up on your wall, be affirming it every day so you kind of come back home to who you are and what's important yeah. to you. Um, but the the what do I want and what's the next step or what do I desire, you know, what what is the next step I think is, is key in um, letting our source guide us to live our purpose. And so uh, I believe our purpose is just really being fulfilled in this moment, taking the next step and enjoying the journey of life. So that's a big one um, for me for purpose. Power on that one, uh, dude, there's, there's so much, but I believe power is the ability to make things happen that you want. It's like, I, I have the power to create my reality. For me, it's, it's creation force. Like if yeah. I am powerful, then I am able to, to take the next step. I am able, I am, I am, uh, I am, I have the authority. I have the, the, uh, the, whatever I need, right? Whatever the resources I need, maybe it's courage, maybe it's money, maybe it's network, whatever it is. But power is the ability to turn those resources, those potential resources into progress, into right. uh, taking steps towards our purpose. So that would be power for me. And then the yeah. last one, prosperity, dude, I love this. I love this one. Uh, I, when I hear prosperity, what that means to me is just the infinite possibilities that life has the infinite Mm. possibilities in this dimension, in this world, in infinite dimensions and worlds and timelines that exist. So when I hear prosperity, I, I connect to the, all that is right to the, Mm. the, the infinite dimensionality of our multiverse and and (laughs) above. Right. And so, um, I just know there's no shortage. There's no freaking lack. There's no, uh, anything that we might feel like constraint or constrained or locked into because Mm. like, I don't know. You kind of alluded to it earlier as life is a game, but like it's all a matrix. It's all an yeah. illusion. It's all, yeah. you know, I, I think that there's a solid hand here, but it's actually just a, a 99.9% space and mm. a little bit of matter, you know, whatever it is. So, uh, yeah, man, prosperity is, I, I connect with the possibilities. I connect with the abundance. I connect with the, um, the, the life choices. I, I hear choice. I hear opportunity, mm. uh, and, and, uh, ability to go where I want. It's a beautiful, beautiful rendition of prosperity. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's the most common representation or the Mm. common definition, which is great. I (laughs) I think I love that idea. I think probably 99.9999% of people would not say that (laughs) if they they were asked what prosperity is. Bentley and house in the hills. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. But that's, um, you know, that's, I want to speak to that because that's, that's what's valuable about podcasts and about yeah. networking all these people that I interviewed is I got to see different perspectives. And that's another thing, dude, traveling the world, seeing different cultures. I mm-hmm. hated traveling. I hated uh, going on vacations. I just wanted my parents to leave me alone and let me play some dang video games in my room, right? Like that's all I wanted when I was yeah. growing up. But yeah. since then, I've evolved in like what, what is really important. Right. What's what's mm-hmm. really important and for me, new experiences, adventures, challenging myself, uh, doing things that I wouldn't normally do is is something that's important to me about the life mm-hmm. that I live and expanding my comfort zone, expanding what is possible. That if I just stay in my cubicle, if I stay in my bubble, if I stay in my room, if I stay in my house, my city, whatever, 
like I won't truly get to experience the magic of this universe. And, you know, mm. if I stay on this planet, you know, I don't know if I'll truly get to experience the ma- magic of this universe. Mm. If I stay in this dimension, I don't yeah. know if I'll truly get to experience the magic of this, uh, of this matrix, whatever. Right. And so mm. I think that's, that's something that's really cool is the ability to uh, open up travel, be willing to have new experiences, because if we're locked into a certain mindset, if we have that fixed mindset, then um, life life can only meet us where we're willing to go to meet life, right? So I, I'm willing to go wherever the heck you want me to go, life, show me the way. <laughs> I, I am yeah. I, I'm surrendered. I am like totally in the flow of the divine will. At least I strive to be. I wouldn't say I'm always that way, but that's, <laughs> that's, my, that's my affirmation. That's my commitment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man. Dude, the there's you mentioned travel and you meant you mentioned opening yourself up to new experiences and, and trying trying or doing whatever you can to be uh, you said in the divine will is that how you yeah yep. yeah and what came to mind for me was uh, and this comes up for me in my own life too but definitely in the lives of um, clients that I've had in the past a through line is that when you get to about twenty six twenty seven twenty eight you start investing yourself almost fully into becoming something, you know, yeah. whether, and it's usually through your career. Sometimes it's through a combination of career and family, but you get into routine. You, you know, you go to work Monday through Friday, you maybe go to the bar with some friends on Friday night, or maybe you, you go in, you know, with your family on Saturday somewhere, but it's usually the same thing over and over yeah. and over. You get into the, fall into these routines. And you mentioned, traveling and inviting yourself into new experiences and experiencing new cultures and new ways of thinking and new ways of looking at the world. And, and uh, I feel like that's, you know, so many, so many people feel their batteries drain day after day, week after week, month after month. And it's not because, you know, they're not getting enough sleep or it's not because they need an extra cup of mm-hmm. coffee. It's because they're not reciprocating with life. They're not, wow. they're not looking for these new opportunities to, to, have new opportunities, new experiences, see the world through a different lens because you're just in this rote routine. And so getting outside of that routine in whatever way you can, and like, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to go travel India for six months. Like you said, it could be just striking up a conversation with a neighbor that you've never bothered saying hi to, or going and taking a different route to work or, uh, you know, going, doing a staycation with your family and exploring a new part of town, but getting yourself out of these getting your hooks out of these routines that are stifling your progress as a human being, I think are so, um, so in- integral to living a fulfilled life. Mm. Mm. I'm curious, like what, with, with your last couple years of living life and experiencing life, what have you noticed about like routine and, and what you are like desiring more of and what you're committed to creating more of in your life, Taylor? Cause I feel like that, that is, is something, a theme in your life <laughs> for some <laughs> <Yeah>. reason. <laughs> well, it's interesting, man. Like, you know, I, I like yourself, I definitely believe that, uh, we create our own our re- own reality in, in whatever way, shape or form that ends up being. And in my life, I found really briefly before. So before 2020, I had a very root, like very, uh, routine based life, yeah. you know, Monday through Friday, I basically do the same thing over. And I was, I guess I, you, you'd call productive. I was very productive, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. quote unquote productive. And, um, and then 2020 happened and I remember, uh, getting home cause I was in Los Angeles at the time. I remember getting home to Canada and, um, there was a whole bunch of things that were happening at once. The world seemed like it was ending, <laughs> uh, business had been cut in half. And my, one of my business partners, we separated ways, so, you know, similar to what, what you went through. And I remember, uh, and being in my apartment here and, and, you know, trying to get back into my routine, which is like waking up at quarter to five and stretching, meditating, cold shower, all these things, all the, you know, all the boxes that guys wish that they could check off, man, I had those checked off for a long time. And then trying to get back into that routine, I was like, but why, what's the point? You know, the word, like, I don't, so I, so what got me back into like a quote unquote routine was, I was, I asked myself, and this is a question I ask my clients all the time, which is, What's the smallest thing that you can do today that you can start with today that you can guarantee yourself success with throughout the week? You can keep it up, but it's so small. Uh, it seems almost inconsequential. And I said, well, I know that I want to get moving. So I 
committed to getting up to, I didn't care what time I woke up, but the first thing I was going to do was I was going to go out and I was going to walk and I was going to listen to something motivational. So I'd listen to an audio book or I'd listen to like a motivational tape or whatever. And that was, that was it. That was a change for me. And so now when you ask what, what that looks like for me in my life now, I'm way kinder to myself. Mm. Uh, I don't have a set schedule. I let clients book in on my calendar based on what best suits them within a window. And then, uh, like we talked about working out, I, I usually go to the gym around one or two, but sometimes I'll go in the morning. Sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll go in the evening. Sometimes I won't go at all. Yeah. And I just, I'm trying to be more kind to myself. I'm trying to hit these main KPIs throughout the day, mm. but when they come in, they come in. And if they don't come in today, that's fine. There's always going to be, uh, tomorrow to, to do something about it. Dude. That's powerful, man. Profound. I love, I love the kindness. I love the compassion and grace for yourself. And, uh, it's, it really reminds me, we were talking about when do we work out? And in the mornings I, I work out typically. And I know that part of that has been part of the routine or even let's say an addiction, right? Like mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to go work out in the morning because that's what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, I'd probably have some pre-workout or something like that. So I like feel amped up and uh, got, got really <laughs> yeah. addicted to that feeling, yeah. that stimulation you know, and, um, yeah. it's a bit, been a big thing for me is, is this sense and experience mm. of stimulation and how it has ran my life, bro. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. and to, to free myself up from that, like even this last week, I went seven days with no caffeine, no tea, oh, no wow. cacao, no nothing, you know, yeah. just like no caffeine. Cause I was like, dude, I don't, I, I, I am committed to freedom and anything that I do just about every day that I say, oh, I could stop that whenever I want. Okay, prove mm -hmm. it. Prove it, CRISPR. Yeah. Prove it, bro. Come yeah. on. You know, it's, and so, um, you know, going on these fasts of whatever, social media or uh, caffeine or drugs or alcohol or yeah. addiction, porn, whatever it might be, you yeah. know, like I think that's, that's a really powerful place to um, lean into if we're looking for more freedom, more mm -hmm. personal power, more courage, you know, developing mm -hmm. those things. And I also love what you said as well about the, the little steps, right? How can, we, how can we come back to the fundamentals? Because as babies, as little toddlers, we learned through mm -hmm. failing forward and through taking taking these little baby steps that yeah. like, like you said, might seem inconsequential, but added up over time, created a massive transformation. And uh, oh, another sense. resource for, for the listeners is the book, the compound effect by Darren Hardy, or if you choose uh, Jeff Olson's slight edge, they're both great. Uh, but I, I started the very first personal development book I read was uh, Darren Car Darren Hardy's compound effect. And that mm. was one that just totally solidified in my mind, right? Like that, that long term. Oh, this is a, this is a journey. This yeah. There's a sprint in the day, of course, but like, don't sacrifice um, who I am at the expense mm -hmm. of trying to get somewhere. Right? Enjoy mm -hmm. the journey um, and know that these little things they add up and they they add to massive exponential gains. Most definitely, uh, taking the Warren Buffett approach to your own personal development. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. long term investment. Yeah, dude, I love that. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned cutting out caffeine and cacao the last like seven days. Cause that's exactly what I'm doing too. Yeah, <laughs> like dude. I started, uh, on Sunday and I don't know, I don't know if this is, if, if you've noticed, but man, like I actually put a, a dream journal beside my bed because all of a sudden I'm having crazy dreams. Bro, again. bro. You too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Right. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't sleeping as long as like sleeping yeah. like six and a half hours instead yeah. of like seven, seven and a half. I was like, what yeah. is happening? Why am I, I sleeping know. less? <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's amazing. I'm, I'm really, really stoked. I mean, uh, I've been a little bit more tired than lately and uh, I've right. got a couple more headaches than that, you know, but yep. other than that. Yep. Well, Christopher, man, I appreciate you. I also appreciate your time. I know that we're coming up on our time here. So, um, you know, first and foremost, I just appreciate you sharing everything that you did today. Lots of, lots of wisdom. And I, and I definitely hope people go check you out, uh, put all of your, um, links to where they can find you in the show notes here. Epic. Um, but before, before I ask you what those are, I'd love to ask you something I ask pretty much everybody is, you know, there's, you have, uh, you have your face for Instagram, you have your face for the podcast and uh, people see you through social media and you're probably one of the most genuine upfront dudes I've ever met. So maybe this question is irrelevant, but the, the question that I ask is when you are on social media, there's often ways people interpret you or misunderstand you, misinterpret you. 
So what do you wish more people knew about Christopher? Hmm. You know, it's uh, being super transparent, man. I think there is an aspect of me that I, I, um, I try to promote and market and things like that, uh, like more, more and more. Right. I want to I want to get my message out there, serve more people. And um, what I would want more people to know about me is how much I love serving people and like just what the experience is like just having a conversation with me. And I think that's something some I can be reserved about sharing about mm. and uh, concerned about what people think, you know, mm, like uh, I'll, yeah. I'll be the first person to say I'm a recovering people pleaser. Um, mm. But I would say it's it's that and the, uh, the aspect of like, like that I have it all together, maybe, um, that, I, that I have lots of energy all the time that I'm always empowered and encouraging with, especially with my 12 hour live streams, people are like, mm. how do you do that? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. what are you a machine? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, no, I just like really challenge myself in those moments and it kicks my butt, you know, mm. like it's, mm. it's a, it's, it's just something I'm willing to do. And so mm. I'd say that's the other thing is just, uh, being relatable and, and letting people know that, yeah, like, uh, even though I got the great stuff on my profile, like I'm still a human being. I'm still going through my stuff, like hardcore, like deal, deal with shame, deal with, um, anxiety, deal with like what people think. And so yeah. I think that's, that's the big thing is like that nobody, as far as I'm concerned, nobody is immune to that stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's what I would leave with. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And, uh, you know, there's power in that owning it, right? Yep. Cause it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody's going to have that, but yep. uh, you can definitely take ownership like you, like you do. Christopher, I appreciate you uh, very much. Thanks for being on the show. Where can people find you? Where should they go? Absolutely. So, uh, facebook.com forward slash T H three burns. That's my personal Facebook. Also, you can search men mastermind yeah, on Facebook and you'll find our Facebook group. We do Monday night mastermind calls are free, uh, just for guys to come hang out, bro out, uh, share wins and to just have a great discussion. That's really, uh, I, I thrive on community and, and conversations just like this, right? Like created a 12 hour live stream to scratch my own itch. I like, I wanted to yeah. be yeah. inspired and hear new ideas and, and serve people, solve problems and, um, expand my, my thinking and how I, I see the world. So, um, yeah. And Instagram at I am millionaire, Chris, and I say the oh, men mastermind.com, the website can find us there. And then mastering man within podcast you can check that out as well. Cause I know, dude, you got, you got a awesome show here, Taylor. And just the, the way you, you ask questions, the way you give and hold space is, is super empowering, man. Uh, I'm so grateful to have you as a brother and just be connected and be on this journey, man. I don't know where things are going to go, how it's going to unfold, but, uh, I'm just really grateful that we connected and that we, we have so much in common, man. It's so, such a yeah. trip about the caffeine yeah. too. Oh my God. No tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The self saying Christopher, man, uh, been a, a real treat connecting with you, having you on the, on the show to ask questions and yeah, I appreciate you brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you again for checking out this episode of the Power Plant Body Podcast. If you enjoyed it, I'd be grateful if you left it a rating and review in iTunes. When you do leave a rating and review, it really helps because it lets iTunes know and they'll be more likely to promote it to others who could also benefit from hearing these conversations. Feel free to share this episode with people who could also benefit from hearing Christopher's insights into passion, purpose, and prosperity. You can learn more about Christopher and how he's helping people live their best life through passion, purpose, and prosperity by checking him out on Instagram. His handle is at I am millionaire Chris. That's at I A M M I L L I O N A I R E C H R I S. Christopher also has a link in his bio to the retreats and events that he regularly hosts. You can also find Christopher on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the burns but that's spelled th3 instead of e and then b-u-r-n-s don't forget to head over to powerplantbody.com forward slash free dash tools to get your hands on a free copy of the goal wheel pdf along with tons of other free tools i'm regularly adding new resources to that page to help you create the best version of yourself so you'll definitely want to bookmark it you can find me on instagram at the vegan trainer and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes. Thanks again for spending some time with Chris and I today. I'll see you in the next episode.